the interior roof looks like this and not this. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, Sonica here from Mali Roofing. Before we get to today's video, just a special thanks to Prava. The Professional Roof Repair and Waterproofing Association of South Africa, where this video will be shot. If you'd like to find out more about Prava and all the good work they do to uplift the skills of people in our industry, click on the link in the description below. It's important to calculate the correct pattern spacings to prevent these problems, as Monray explains. Okay, Monray, you were quickly explaining to me um, that it is very, very important to, um, to determine your batten spacing beforehand. So can you briefly explain to us how do you go about calculating batten spacing? Yeah, it's very important to basically start off with your um, apex. You measure 25 millimeters from the top and this is where you have your first batten, your 30, 30, uh, 38 by 38 when you have it nailed here. Okay. And then, for example, when we go down to the if, you take your tilting button, which is normally a 38 by 50, you nail it down here, and then you measure from the top to the top, or either from the bottom to the bottom. Oh, I see. So whatever yes. you do at the top, whatever you do at the bottom, you kind of need to repeat that. That's 100%, yes. So I wanted to ask you, so sometimes what I have seen is I've seen groups where it looks more or less equally spaced and then when you look at the last um, course of the tiles when it meets the apex of the ridge at the top it looks like it's been squashed in yes. why does that happen that is the reason why they haven't uh, equally staggered the battens through right from the apex to the eave yes. and that is very very important to have it equally let's say for example what you do is you take it from the top to the top and for example it's going to give you let's say for example one meter length which this is a small truss now and then you divide that by 320 millimeters because okay. that's your norm okay. in the industry for the uh, batten spacing okay but i've also heard that you get batten spacing of 345 so why are you saying uh, the 320 uh, 320 is the normal as i mentioned earlier 345 is let's say for example only a roof pitch of higher than 26 degrees oh, well, if it's lower than 26 you can't use that uh, um, let's say for example if you use an under tile or a radiant barrier as well because your overlap of your um, tile must be 100 millimeters and if it's above uh, 26 degrees and you use it for 345 it's only 75 millimeter oh i understand okay. that's mainly for wind driven uh, rain and all those kind of things oh okay i understand that Okay, so but now let's say you've your measurement um, that you've worked out and you've now used this um, 320 uh, measurement and you've divided it, but it doesn't work, it doesn't round off 100%. Mm. What do you do then? What you're basically going to do is, it, let's say, for example, it's going to give you, for example, 318.1, uh, 318.2. Yes. You can work on 318, for example, especially if it's on the smaller truss. Um, it's going to give you the exact uh, spacing that you actually need at the end of the day. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's okay to basically increase your head lap, but just never decrease it. 100%. Okay. You can slide, well, it's better to increase, yeah, but let's try to stay closer to the norm, which is a 320 millimeter. Okay, I understand. As Monray explained, we can measure from the apex button to the tilting button to quickly determine the number of courses required for our roof. Though, to achieve the most accurate batten spacing, the first tiling batten needs to be in the correct position. Hence, it's best to have the first tiling batten and apex batten installed on site and then to measure the distance between the apex batten and the first tiling batten at the eave. Depending on the design of the roof, the first tile batten at the eaves is normally placed at 335 mm from the outside edge of the rafter to allow for a 60 mm overhang of the first tile into the gutter. For open eaves, without a gutter, the first tiling batten is normally placed 305 mm from the outside edge of the rafter. Using this illustration, the rafter length of this roof is 4160 mm. 
deducting the 25 millimeters required for the apex batten and let's say 335 millimeters, the distance the first tile batten will be placed from the edge of the rafter equates to 3800 millimeters. Now divide this measurement with the ideal batten spacing. In this case, we will use 320 millimeters as we would like a tile overlap that is closest to 100 millimeters to provide the correct amount of rows required between the apex batten and the first tiling eaves batten. The answer is 11.875, but once again, this is not a workable number, so we round it off to 12 rows. Now divide 3800 millimeters, the measurement we got between the two battens, with the 12 rows required. This equates to 316.6, rounded off to 317 millimeters, which is our correct batten spacing to achieve equally spaced battens for this roof. And there you have it. Be sure to subscribe as we are posting these videos on a weekly basis to boost our algorithm. See you in the next video.